That's a good one, though. Okay, so uh, I have to use my lecture voice. <laughs> so if you can't hear me, just let me know. First off, if you have any open seats, can you raise your hand? Yeah, we've got a few open seats if you guys want to file in. It's probably better to be in this side of the room, generally. Hi. Yeah, go ahead. I think there's one here. How many in the back, guys? So we have six. If you guys want, if you're okay. What you want? Yeah, there are seats. <clears throat> We're going to be snug. I like that. This is a little bit of like a, a Danish tradition here, isn't it? Who got Thank you for letting me. Okay, so I want to open up by uh, thanking our volunteers who greeted you and prompted you with some things to do before you came in. So Juan Alvarez, Catherine Metz, and Celeste Malvar Stewart, just want to thank you guys for, for your help to pull this together. Um, second of all, second off, this is like a very serious topic and it could hit people in different ways. So just be super like cool with each other and like if you don't want to do anything, that's totally fine. If you just want to sit there and not talk or whatever or leave, totally cool. Uh, you know what I mean? This is a big group of people, so it's totally fine. Um, next, uh, we're gonna run through this. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get this to work. So this is my Instagram handle. If you like French Bulldogs uh, or pictures of me and Juan hiking uh, pretty much every weekend, follow me on Instagram. Or <clears throat> I think Twitter is still available. Um, second of all, I was recently named to the Alive People to Watch this year. This is like a very, it's a bigger deal than I thought it was. And um, so I'm very grateful for this uh, recognition. Uh, primarily because it sort of points out a lot of the things that I've done in Columbus over the past four or five years uh, that I felt were very meaningful that no one noticed, but turns out they did notice, you know what I mean? So, uh, the creative cycle. So, s storytelling is uh, my expression of creativity. And I do it in so many different ways. I mean, it's like infographics, it's data on maps and telling stories that way, it's uh, neighborhood house and well HQ and tying the whole well uh, theme into the actual theme, theme of what we're doing and it's of course telling stories of people that you guys probably know on stage I do a lot of events I've organized over 30 different events including some major events like startup storytellers which is now test city storytellers March 7th um, and also like video profiles of creative people so that was a fun project I did Celeste was my first victim, and that's how we got to know each other. <clears throat> um, and then the 1990 principle up on the right-hand side. So I'm very much in a process and like thinking about things in like a very big way. Um, and so that's what we're going to get into today. It's like I wanted to put my own creativity on display for you guys rather than dig into like what Carl Jung says about death, which is equally as important, uh, way more important but this is different. <laughs> so this is about experiencing it in the moment. So um, if you care about the stuff I'm doing, like I said, I care a lot about process and creating tools for storytelling. It's a real thing, and I'm creating field tools for storytelling. So if these are all free, it's kind of like IDEO uh, looks at the, that's how I'm looking at like the idea of storytelling. Um, so if you want, feel free to go to my website, 1990.com, and grab any field tools that you'd like. Okay, since I'm standing here, I'm not an expert, right, in this idea of death. I have not died. I'm here standing as we are, all are today. So this is just sort of my take on what death means. We're going to do it in three parts. So you should have been handed a program 
that corresponds to the other side of that. If you want to take notes, there might be some times throughout this where you want to jot something down. Go ahead, that's totally just for you. And uh, they will not be collected, it's totally private, everything else. Part one, the shared experience of a lifetime. So I need a few creative volunteers. One, two, three, four. Okay, you four, come up here. The, the rest of you, you're not getting off that easy. So the rest of you have to talk to people you don't know, figure it out about your name, where you were born, the neighborhood you live in, and one thing you admire about the person who has died. So you don't have to like say who they are or whatever. Again, totally optional, okay? All right, so you four, come over here. Pam, you want to go last, right? Okay, it's fine. Okay. All right, here we go. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here to witness the life of a beautiful wife, daughter, mother, and so much more. With us today, I have four people that knew her very well. Pam? My daughter was a wonderful birth experience and we fell in love with her immediately. But after about six months, we realized that she was hearing impaired, deaf, and we had to adjust our thought process about how to give her the best life possible for her to be engaged in life. And that set us on a totally different trajectory that I would not change. But wow, what an amazing cook. She was one of the best darlings I've ever got to know. And she made the best eggs with the most runny yolk that I smothered all over my face. <laughs> She's the only person that I'll ever let cook my eggs. I remember we met when we were traveling to Japan and deciding to take a sushi class. She was the most fun expat that I'd ever seen. She was teaching English at the time, and she knew Japanese better than me. Whatever she said, I don't remember, but I remember it was very wrong, and he couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and because she could not really communicate with, with uh, words the way traditional people do, because but she could in Japanese and in uh, <laughs> English. She communicated with science and she had a social conscience and she was always the change that I really wish I could be and she, was, she inspired me to be the change that you want to see in the world. Oh, beautiful. Round of applause, right? <laughs> you guys can take your seats. Okay, so this is for anyone. So what, what, what do you know about her? She cooked good eggs. She was born deaf. Born deaf. She traveled. Traveled. Expat. Expat. Good sense of humor. Good sense of humor. Activist. Activist. Good one. She likes sushi. Likes sushi. Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. So. There are these ideas of prayer flags, right? And to me, the experience of a lifetime, the shared experience of a lifetime, are these flags that are strung on a string all together that have different meanings and different sayings and everything else. And so, as we just saw and just witnessed, we didn't, we just made this person up, right? But we all felt this moment together. And we all participated in the passing of this individual. <clears throat> and so this is going to lead up, of course, into uh, further things. But does this concept make sense? Okay. That this is what life is. 
Okay, part two. Legacy. A story of life after death. Totally optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, but if you do want to, close your eyes and open your mind's eye. You see, th everything is black, but you see three glowing orbs. The first orb comes in close to you and it turns around. This is someone who has passed away that you've never met. Maybe it's a famous scientist or maybe it's a famous author, a painter, someone that you admire, you think about. You think about what this person has accomplished. Try to get a mental image of what that person looks like and a feeling of what they mean to you. Now that orb goes back to the three. The middle orb comes in closer and it turns around. This is someone who has passed away that you knew perhaps at one point in your life, but you wouldn't say that you were close. This is maybe a high school friend or someone who you just knew in passing. Maybe it was the person who bagged your groceries that, that you kind of knew. Imagine what that person looks like or how you remember them. Do they have any traits that you admire? Now that orb goes back to the set of three. And finally, the brightest glowing orb comes into your presence. This is someone who you love, who's passed away. <coughs> Notice the level of detail that you have with this image, with this person. Notice the traits that you admire, the things that you missed, what you really love about their life. Okay, now all three go back together and fade off. Okay, you can open your eyes. Okay, so this is, in my opinion, the complete view of legacy. It has a lot of layers. So when someone dies, <clears throat> this is everyone who is impacted by that person's legacy. So there's like this outer band, which is piecemeal, right? It's all piecemealed all together. There are these tighter knit circles that represent the people who knew them. And then there's just this little small tight circle around. These are the people that knew that person the best. So as you think about the visualization that we just went through, maybe, I'm, maybe this means something to you. It, this idea means something to me that I could think of someone on the outer rim like Einstein but I don't really know him, so I see internet images in my head. But then I see people on sort of the middle, it's like a high school friend who's passed away. But we don't stay connected, but I still, I'm impacted by that, right? I still feel that, like, oh my gosh. And then, of course, there's that inner ring of family members. And just to call that out a little bit more, we'll, we'll just go through, I just pulled it out so you can see it easier. So this is like one layer removed. So this is folks who knew them personally. And then finally, just a few close friends and family. When someone dies, it's really probably a handful of people that do everything, write all the obituaries, like everything, right? Everything they have to do, get in touch with everyone. A lot of stuff. Part three. 
What, what are you handing down? It's such a simple de definition of legacy. It's just something that's handed down by a predecessor. Yeah, this is a super simple concept once you start thinking about, wait, what's my legacy? Like, what am I doing in this world if I die? Like, what are people... <clears throat> so, the 1990 principle is something I want to share with you guys. And this is what I focus on every day. It's what we've focused on here today. But the 1990 principle, you can Google it, Wikipedia, you know, skeptics out there. <laughs> You know, 1%, uh, so this is every single community-based website. Facebook, Wikipedia, Twitter, you name it. 1% of the people who use the site create all of the content. Right, the creators. It's like, look around, you guys are the creators of Columbus, right? 9% engage. So. These are the folks who like and comment and share your Facebook posts over and over and over again. And then you'll notice if you switch topics, it's a whole different crew of people. You're tapping into a different set of 9%ers. And then your 90%ers, these are just consumers. It's nothing bad or anything. They're just, they don't really connect with you as, as deeply. And so as I started to work on this project, I was like, well, what are like some legacies, you know what I mean? And I started like really digging into my knowledge bank of, of some of these ideas, like royalty, right? We think of like Princess Diana, she was like royalty. The financial, super wealthy people, thought, ideas, pioneers, Davy Crockett, uh, war heroes, athletics, crime, creativity, art. Business, career, civic, political, invention, discovery, celebrity. So these are really for the 90 percenters, right? These ideas of like you could really blow it out in one of these categories. That's really for your 90 percenters in your life. This is really where it matters. And so as you're thinking about your own personal legacies and what I just told you about the 1990 and about what truly matters and about how content is created in the world by a very small amount of people. This is another way to think about it. So these are for your one percenters, your nine percenters. That person was my hero. A nice person, a movement <coughs> believer, mom and dad, incredible lover, cared about me, organizer, responsible, compassionate, helper, war veteran. You know, these aren't like things that you would think of all the time. Community gardener, that's for Socrates, right? That's how he was always known. <clears throat> <coughs> and, you know, you guys kind of affirmed what I thought might be true. So when we gave you a rose, or a carnation, um, these are actually done by the folks just down on uh, Parsons Street, Parsons and Oak. Um, I have their cards if you are interested. Um, they need some help right now with all the construction. It's a total disaster area. But um, So anyway, you were given that carnation and asked to think about someone who's passed away. And then come and put it in the vase that, ma that ma means something. And so you can see this one is new, knew the person personally. And then just a few folks said that they've heard of. So this would be sort of like your Einsteins and maybe uh, John Glenn, stuff like that. So just, I mean, this is, this is remarkable. I actually didn't even expect it to be this high. But this just really affirms what really matters in life. And so I have three things that uh, I thought we all could focus on. Um, you know, just to be kind to the living, to use our creativity to help people, that's something we all can do, <coughs> and to be grateful that we are alive. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>